So now let's talk a little bit about um, the life cycle of startups. And in my description of the life cycle of startups, I'm going to highlight three uh, fundamental phases in the uh, life cycle of a startup. Um, the first phase is going to be something that I call the search for product market fit. Um, second phase is going to be the search for a repeatable and monetizable uh, business model, uh, also sometimes referred to as the search for go to market fit. And uh, then the third phase is going to be called being a scale up or aggressively scaling. Um, the numbers here, these are meant to be timelines. The numbers don't have any meaning in and of themselves. It's just something that I had to include when I generated these figures. But one thing you'll notice is that I actually have overlap between the different phases. Um, that's meant to highlight the fact that it's not necessarily always 100% clear cut when you transition from one phase to another phase. And sometimes you actually want to start uh, trying to implement you know, phase three, so aggressive scaling, before you've actually been able to prove that you have a profitable customer acquisition strategy, right? So sometimes before you solve one phase, you enter into the next phase. And we'll talk a little bit about what governs that choice uh, a little bit later. Now, what's the main point of kind of this staggered life cycle for a, for a startup? The basic idea here uh, is that you're trying to resolve the forms of uncertainty that I mentioned earlier, right? If we recall, uh, product uncertainty, beachhead market uncertainty, go-to-market uncertainty, and market expansion uncertainty. You're trying to kind of resolve the, uh, these forms of uncertainty in phases as opposed to trying to resolve them all at once, right? So with the first you know, phase of the startup life cycle, search for product market fit. Sometimes um, uh, practitioners will refer to the search for product market fit as testing a value hypothesis. Um, what you're trying to achieve in this first phase of the life cycle is um, basically you're trying to identify both, basically resolve both product uncertainty and beachhead market uncertainty. So your goal is to produce a product or service that some beachhead market passionately wants, right? So you're trying to find, okay, I have this product and service that I've, uh, that I've figured out how to produce, uh, and there's this target market that uh, finds this product or service very valuable. So it's less about quantity. So it's not about the number of customers that you're getting or how easy it is for you to get those customers. It's just identifying a product and market combination that, um, that seems to, to fit very well. Uh, and generally, once you resolve this phase, and I'm going to highlight some of the uh, key things that startups do in the search for product market fit a little bit later in tonight's lecture. Um, but when you resolve this, uh, uh, this phase, sometimes people refer to that as finding a value proposition for your startup. Then the next phase is search for go-to-market fit sometimes also referred to as testing a growth hypothesis. And at this stage, remember, you found a product and uh, a product or service that your target market you know, values highly, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you, that, that that target market is aware of your, uh, of the val of your value proposition. So, with a uh, search for go-to-market fit, your goal is to figure out, well, how can you predictably and scalably reach your target market and make them aware of the value proposition that you actually offer to them? Um, and so this is really about um, doing a combination of different things. Um, it's about testing different sales and marketing channels, uh, different forms of messaging, different forms of pricing, uh, and maybe continuing to make some adjustments to your product or target market uh, in order to, um, again, uh, figure out a way to, to get this target market in a predictable manner. And as I said earlier, ideally in a profitable manner. And the analytics around trying to determine whether you uh, acquire users in this phase in a profitable manner is something referred to as unit economics, which is going to be one of the core um, uh, elements of the finance toolkit that we 
uh, that we cover in this course. All right, so you notice like we resolve two forms of uncertainty with product search for product market fit. We resolve another form of uncertainty in search for go to market fit. Um, these two phases I think of as being highly experimental phases for a startup. So really the main thing you're doing in search for product market fit and search for go to market fit is you're trying to resolve uncertainty. Your focus at this stage is not necessarily generating profits. Um, it's you know trying to figure out a way where you kind of clear a path towards profitability going forward. In the third stage of the startup life cycle, which is referred to as aggressive scaling, uh, at this stage, you start to do two things, right? You start to exploit what you've uh, figured out or, or determined from phase one and phase two of the startup life cycle, um, right? So think about what you've done in phase one and phase two. You've figured out a product and target market along with uh, a go-to-market strategy that allows you to acquire users ideally profitably. Well, and, and that has to be a go-to-market strategy that's scalable. Um, and so if you've got something that's scalable that adds value, then you want to start doing that as rapidly as you can. So you start thinking about executing on your go-to-market strategy that you determine in phase one and phase two uh, at a broader scale. But at the same time, you want to find out new ways to further expand your market. So in the aggressive scaling stage, a startup tends to have two sets of things that it's doing. One is it's you know, trying to perfect execution on what it's already learned in phase one and phase two of the startup life cycle. And then it continues to try to experiment and test in order to find ways to expand its market by in some sense redoing phase one and phase two uh, for expansions of their market. Uh, and usually aggressively, uh, aggressive scaling uh, occurs in waves. So maybe you figured out how to have product market fit and go to market fit for a specific product that your startup sells, and you figure, figured out how to do this specifically in the Canadian market. With aggressive scaling, what you might do next and specify, I want to expand the market by expanding, say, into the US. Right? So you don't try to expand in multiple different ways all at once. You kind of pick a particular way that you're going to try to expand your market. Usually, it's either geographic expansion or uh, trying to expand the revenue potential that you can get from your existing uh, target market by you know, offering you know, uh, either uh, new products or services that are related to, right? So think of like add-ons to, to the existing product and service that you've gotten traction in your current market. And so generally, aggressive scaling happens in multiple, multiple phases. Um, search for go-to-market fit and, and search for product market fit. Because these are experimental phases, um, startups don't know how long it'll take them to be able to resolve these uh, these various forms of uncertainty. And since there's a lot of uncertainty in how much time it'll take uh, to, to resolve these uncertainties, uh, startups in these early stages really want to conserve capital. So they want to kind of minimize the amount of money they're spending as they're trying to navigate through these two phases. Whereas generally what you see with aggressive scaling is that the rate at which a startup starts spending capital in this stage uh, increases dramatically. And the reason is it costs money to acquire users, um, but, you but you know that you can profitably spend that money to acquire users. And so you try to do this as rapidly as possible. And that involves generally a, um, a dramatic increase uh, in the rate of spending of a startup. So there tends to be a pretty dramatic shift in a startup when it moves from kind of, as I said, these more experimental phases in phase one and phase two uh, to uh, phase three where you've got um, um, this element of execution that involves uh, dramatically increasing your uh, burn rate so that you can grow as rapidly as possible and take advantage of you know, your scalable go-to-market strategy uh, identified in phase two. Now, what's the logic of this uh, life cycle? So why is it that, we, that startups choose to break almost always choose to break their, um, uh, their life cycle into the following phases. Again, this has a lot to do with the fact that 
we have a tremendous amount of uncertainty with a startup, um, but also startups have very limited resources. And so they want to be resolving this uncertainty in as efficient and low cost of a manner uh, as possible. And so the optimal way for a startup to execute is not to try to resolve all of these forms of uncertainty, right? The, the four forms of uncertainty that I mentioned earlier, product uncertainty, beachhead market uncertainty, go to market uncertainty, market expansion uncertainty. The, the goal should not be to resolve all these forms of uncertainty at once. You want to resolve them in, in, in stages um, so that you don't necessarily uh, burn through a tremendous amount of uh, capital that, um, um, that you either don't have or would be ex you know, very expensive for you to raise. And so what we're doing in this life cycle of startups is we're basically trying to not resolve all of our uncertainty in one test. Think of it as a, a single product launch. We instead want to break our resolution of uncertainty into sequence of smaller tests where we first resolve product and beachhead market uncertainty, right? And then once we've figured out a product target market combination where the target market values the product a lot, only at that point, point do we try to figure out a way to reliably acquire that market. I mean, that makes perfect sense, right? You would, it makes no sense to try to go to market until you know you have a product that your target market values. Right, so if you try to resolve uncertainty one, two, and three uh, simultaneously, the moment you have a wrong combination in category one and two, category three is hopeless. So you shouldn't try to resolve this uncertainty until you know that you've at least success, successfully figured out, you know, um, resolved uncertainty one and two, right? Anything spent on category three uh, before you've resolved one and two, is potentially uh, involving a uh, waste of resources. And similarly, it doesn't make sense to try to aggressively expand your market and aggressively go to market until you know that you have a profitable go to market strategy, right? That basically kind of highlights why we tend to stagger uh, this resolution of uncertainty in, um, in startups. And again, I'll highlight um, all of this with uh, specific examples as I go through um, each of these three phases of the startup life cycle in more detail um, a, you know, a little bit later in, in today's uh, tonight's lecture. But before I start going over uh, details of, uh, of different stages of the, of the startup life cycle, I want to mention a few other um, kind of unique things and, and, and features of, um, of startups. Uh, and one is uh, the unique funding life cycle, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, that startups have. And in particular, the most striking feature of uh, funding for startups uh, is that startups raise their financing in uh, multiple stages, right? So what you don't see startups do is raise all the capital they need to resolve phase one, phase two, and phase three at the start of their business. Instead, what they do is they raise a, you know, the capital they need initially to be able to finance you know, potentially uh, resolving product market fit. And then after they've resolved that, they tend to raise another round of funding to try to resolve go to market fit. And then they raise additional rounds of funding, again, generally more than one round. So they'll raise maybe let's say the startup wants to expand from Canada to the US initially in their aggressive scaling for expansion, what they'll do is they'll raise a new round of funding after they've, again, successfully established a go-to-market for the Canadian market. When they raise that capital, they'll raise enough capital to be able to execute the strategy that they know works at scale for Canada. And then they'll also raise a bit more capital in order to be able to test expansion into the US market. If they succeed in expanding into the US market, then they'll raise another round of funding to execute in the US market and maybe to expand to the European market. So the aggressive scaling phase tends to have many rounds of funding embedded with it to coincide with the, the waves of expansion that startups um, 
uh, generally tackle uh, in their life cycle.